Hi everyone. Welcome to the WSO2 Identity Server User Provisioning Training video. In this video, we are going to learn about the usage and benefits of user provisioning. In the present day, when you join a new organization, start a new course in an educational center, or even open a bank account, your identity will be represented by a digital entity. Mostly we call this digital form of identity information a user account. The organization can maintain these accounts in their own system. In a system depending on the privileges assigned for an account, the user can have a different level of access to resources and services. User provisioning is the process of creating and maintaining digital identities or user accounts in a system and assigning appropriate privileges to these user accounts. The primary goal of user provisioning is to automate these tasks as much as possible in order to reduce cost and improve security. Provisioning plays a major role throughout the identity lifecycle, starting from user onboarding to exit. When a user begins a relationship with an organization, a user account needs to be created in the system along with the necessary user identifiers. Based on the nature of the organization, the user account creation process would differ. It can be creating the user in an LDAP or Active Directory and or creating an email ID for the user. This account creation can be an administrative task or a self-service task, depending on the business. For example, when a new employee joins a bank, an account is created by the system administrator of the bank. But if we need an online retail system, end users can self sign up and create their own accounts to make purchases. Next, based on the user's job profile within the organization, the necessary user roles are assigned to the user account to provide only the required privileges. Later in the identity lifecycle, the user identifiers and the privileges are used to authenticate and authorize the user into the systems and determine the access. When a user leaves the organization, the user will be deprovisioned from the system, where the access rights will be revoked and the necessary security measures will be applied to prevent the users from using the system further. Additionally, there are a few more user provisioning features. User provisioning systems keep an audit trail to track all the changes enabling to trace who changed what, when, and why. User provisioning systems can also generate reports that provide information about user privileges that are useful for security audits. User provisioning systems enable governing workflows, thereby providing the ability to grant access to the system upon approval. Users can also be notified about changes to their accounts and their privileges. Many user provisioning systems provide self-service interfaces that can be used by users to reset their passwords, request for access, review their accounts to check usernames, and so on. This considerably reduces the help desk load. Sophisticated user provisioning systems are capable of creating groups, replicating organizational structure, and even provisioning and deprovisioning services. Provisioning systems save time and money while improving security. They provide seamless integration between systems in relation to identity and access management. Today, systems within an organization are not standalone. They are interconnected with multiple other internal and external systems as well as cloud solutions. Hence, when a user is onboarded, that identity needs to be propagated among different systems. If these multiple systems speak different protocols, there will be redundant integration efforts. There have to be different implementations for communicating with each system, and the maintenance of multiple connectors will be a nightmare. To reduce the complexity and cost, the world has agreed upon common protocols such as KIM and SPML. By reducing redundant integration efforts, these standards simplify and make user provisioning more scalable. 
Now we will learn about standard user provisioning methods. Creating and managing user identities in the internal system using an external user store is called inbound user provisioning. And propagating internal user identities to an external system is called outbound provisioning. Provisioning users to the internal system at the time of federated authentication is called just-in-time provisioning, which is popularly known as JIT provisioning. These are the provisioning capabilities in WSO2 Identity Server. Scheme APIs, SOAP APIs, using the administrative portal, self-registration portal, self-registration API, just-in-time provisioning, provisioning connectors. We have now come to the end of this training video. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned from this training. First, we got a quick overview of user provisioning. Then, we learned about the benefits of user provisioning. Finally, we got to know the popular user provisioning standards and the standard user provisioning methods. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. Our email is iam-dev at wso2.org. In Stack Overflow, tag with wso2 or wso2is. And our Slack channel is wso2is.slack.com. Thank you for joining the session.